A year ago, Ian and LP Greenhouse left the city and bought this Grade 2 listed windmill in the heart of the Lancashire countryside. My vision has always been to have an immaculate house in an immaculate location. Their plan, to renovate this unique property and create a wonderful family home. It's not just a dream, it's actually happening. But will a complicated build, combined with living on site with their baby son, turn their dream into a nightmare? I'm very worried about Elpie. She's very much losing interest with the build. She's falling out of love with the property. It's the first time that I've actually considered actually selling this place and moving on because I've had so much heartache. I'm at the end of my tether. When people fantasise about a new life in the country, they usually dream of a thatched cottage, a, a barn conversion, maybe a rambling farmhouse. But the couple I'm about to meet decided they simply had to have something a little less conventional. Forty-year-old solicitor Ian and 35-year-old former PRLP Greenhouse moved from Wigan to the village of Bretherton in Lancashire. They've bought an old industrial windmill and the neighbouring house, which they're adding an extension to. Ian and LP used their savings and took out a mortgage to cover the £490,000 price tag. For over a year, they've been living on site in a summer house with their son, William, while waiting for planning permission and looking for a builder. Work finally started four months ago. Ian, LP. Hi. Hi. That is an amazing house. Thank you. How did you find the building? We were looking to move um, away from a, a housing yeah. estate which we were in. It had got too big and it, it, it had lost all its personality. So we were looking to get back to a, a, a sort of village and a, and, and a country environment. And one day we, we just came across this and took one look at it and thought, yeah, didn't even go in, we just, we just looked at it from the gate. But I never thought... You know, we'd, we'd be living here and it would be ours. Are you getting a real sense of fulfilment in this new life? My sense of fulfilment comes from, from William. The fact that I'm building my nest is a bonus. So, Ian, how can you see your life changing through this process of building this house, of creating this family home? My focus at the moment is on, obviously, working to pay for this. My payback will, will, will hopefully come. Um, if and when I can ever cut down the amount, of, uh, the amount of time I spend in the office, and then I can really enjoy this. The windmill has three floors, and on each level they want to create a unique bedroom, each with an ensuite. Ian and Elpi hope to join the circular windmill to the square house with a stunning glass corridor. The glass link will open into a hallway. From there, they want a minimalist contemporary kitchen and breakfast area, which will follow through to a grand dining room and living area. The sitting room will open back onto the hallway. And from there, a staircase will lead up to the master bedroom with ensuite. And next door, their son William's room. They also want to make an upstairs seating area with a glass balustrade. Overall, LP hopes to create a contemporary and stylish home. Wow! What a space. I mean, look, this is a curving mm -hmm. stringer to the stairs. So you, everything yeah. you're building has to curve with the shape Absolutely. Of the, of the, yeah, it's, the upturned coat. It's not a case of buying a, uh, a flight of stairs off the peg. No, absolutely not. No, no, it's uh, got to be made for this windmill. What about heating a space like that? I mean, you've got a very unusual heating challenge, haven't you? Because mm -hmm. curved radiators you can get, but then you can't get curved radiators that fit on the inside of a cone. And if you put them on the flat walls, that's the only place you can put your furniture. We've gone for underfloor heating in, uh, in all, of, all of this. What about insulation? Are you insulating these walls? Um, yes. <laughs> yes and no. I don't know. I mean, I, I would think about trying to get some insulation yeah. on the walls. Because, you know, these, you won't go back and do it again. No. And it should be like this for another 50, 100 years. When built in 1741, this windmill was one of around 10,000 that covered the countryside. Today, about 1,200 remain, and many have been converted into unusual homes. Although, due to their conical shape, they can be really tricky to renovate. What are you going to do on the ground floor? 
Well, there's one bedroom in there, which is going to be my little sort of area of indulgence. I'll have my spa bathroom in there, and uh, I'll, I'll really look forward to having my, my first bath after a year and a half. That's going to be my sort of area of switching off completely. How did you actually design the project? We went to an architect when we bought it and, um, and said, yeah, we've, uh, we've got this house, it looks a bit disjointed, can you do something with it? He did a couple of designs, we liked this one, and, uh, and we went ahead with it. And have you, has he been involved right the way through the process? No, he was only involved up to uh, the listed building consent. Yeah. yeah. And you've gone it alone? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's not, it's not always easy. In, in some respects, it would have been nice to have the, the services of an architect, but the, the budget on this just wouldn't allow it. That then means that we have a, a much more involved um, role. And it's quite important for both of us that, is, that it's done just right. I want this house to be absolutely perfect. I want it to be the house I've always wanted. However, not using an architect or professional project manager to oversee such a demanding technical build does concern me. How much have you budgeted for the work? We think it's going to it's going to finish up 340, 350. I'd be impressed, very impressed, if you got it in for, for 340. Well, I, I I hope we impress you. They'll be financing the build with a combination of Ian's wages and their savings. When do you want to be moving in there? We're officially looking at end of September. Unofficially, we hope we're going to be in before Christmas. <laughs> I think there's no doubt that this is going to be the most amazing family home. But with Ian working long hours and LP juggling motherhood with a tricky build and her exacting high standards, I can't help thinking that something out of budget, deadline or quality is going to have to give. One year ago, Ian and LP Greenhouse bought this Grade 2 listed windmill in Lancashire. After waiting for planning permission, they're now four months into the build. During the past year, Ian and LP have been living on site in a summer house with their son William. Every morning I wake up and I think, I can't stand it another day in here. And every day I, you just go on, don't you, because you, you've got to. There's no other option. Today is a big day. Now that the interior walls have been built on the top floor of the house, the steel structure can be fitted for the new roof. But the build is already four weeks behind schedule. It's a complicated renovation and Ian and Elpie have decided not to employ an architect or project manager. Instead, work is being overseen by head builder Bernard. We're behind for a lot of reasons. Um, some to do with the um, architectural design that we've had to we've had problems with. Uh, help us and Ian have changed certain things. We've tried to work our way around it so we're, we're not delayed too much, and we're trying to play catch up. Since giving up her public relations business and moving to the country, LP has been discovering new passions. I absolutely love growing my own plants and my own veg, obviously. I've made such a change from my previous life to where I am now, and maybe that's what I'm loving, that it's such a complete change. I didn't change jobs or change profession, or jo I, I just c completely changed my life, and I think that's what I'm, uh, I'm, I'm so enjoying. A year ago, I would have never thought I'd be here with muddy hands and gloves trying to dig out spots. Point. Ian's day-to-day -day existence is somewhat different to LP's. He has to work long hours to pay for the build. I have a small firm of solicitors that uh, specialises in recovering uh, money for commercial clients, mainly centred around debt and debt recovery. Morning. Morning. Morning, Ian. I'd love to be in a position to, to cut down the amount, of, uh, the amount of time I spend in here and spend more time with LP and William. And that is the goal, that's, that's the dream. 
Ian and Elpie have now been living in the summer house, or what she calls the shed, without any mod cons for over a year. I'm really quite fed up with living in a shed. I just want to move into a house. Um, and I want to move into a house with hot water and, you know, a proper room for him to sleep in so he's not sleeping in the same room with us still. He's nine months old now. Since the build started over four months ago, there's been a delay in ordering the windows. The samples Bernard found were not what Ian and LP wanted. Um, so when, when can you actually come down? Because I need to get this resolved. I'm um, getting quite frustrated because we're, we're about two, three weeks away of having a finished roof and we still don't have any windows and we don't have a date for the windows to be going in. No windows means the house is not watertight, so the concrete screed floor can't be laid. When do you think we'll resolve this situation with the windows? Because that's stopping us from doing anything else in the building and it's going to delay it. And I'll tell you what, Bernard, I'll make sure you move in the shed and I'll move in your house for Christmas if we're not in by then. Well, when can we resolve this? Because it's just going from week well, to you, week. Well, I mean, you've week. got, at the moment, you've got two, you've got two quotations. Two in quotations, which I emailed you. I've not got a breakdown of them, I've got a lump sum of them. Yeah. And yeah. that's going two months back now, Bernard. Yeah, that's two months out. back, and it's taken us two months to get two quotes and one sample. Where's the rest of it? I accept that. I accept that. Let me, let me, let me just, let me make a few calls now. Because I'll just. It comes across sometimes as though it's total confusion, but it's organised chaos. <laughs> but it does work. It does work. You know, we've done it before, and we, we get there at the end of the day. All I'm getting at the moment is I'll just make a phone call, oh, you'll have it tomorrow, you'll have it at the end of the week. I've got this constant nagging feeling that we're going to be here during another winter again. <coughs> is that yummy? While they're waiting for the windows, the builders get on with other jobs. First up, lime rendering, a traditional method of covering brickwork which allows old buildings to breathe. The lime rendering is uh, started properly today, but uh, the weather's been quite bad, so um, they've actually just managed to make some real progress. We haven't resolved the situation with the windows yet. Um, that's, that's still a major area of concern. Um, we've got an appointment today with a manufacturer who believes that they can deliver the right profile of window. Things are quite stressful because there's um, there's so many things that still need to um, to happen for it to be ready before Christmas so we can move in. The right profile means the right shape. The windmill is a sloping building, so the windows have to match the slope. It's a design constraint that needs careful consideration. Is this the last major hurdle this to overcome? They've been tested to British standards. No, I know, but they've never been on a slope before, have they? No. If you're happy that it's going to work, and you can give me a guarantee that it is working, right. then I don't have an issue with that. You're confident that it's going to do the job? I'm quite confident. That went surprisingly well. Um, I'm relieved that we found a profile that's appropriate to the vision that we have for the house. We've got to resolve. Yeah, absolutely, at long last. <laughs> After dealing with builders all day, Elpie then has to look after William. Waiting for him to come back from work is probably the most stressful time of the day because it's the time when it's, it's William's bedtime. And we normally have a list of four or five things we need to discuss with regards to the building. Hello, monkey. Hey. <laughs> Hello. Oh. How are you? Thanks for that. When I get home in the evening, I go in there, I play with William for about three and a half seconds till he gets bored of me and starts to play with my pens or whatever. And although I can forget about work, I've still got this to think about. There are still certain things that are, uh, that, that are unresolved. There's so much that we've got to do in the evenings. You know, it really is very draining. Just leave her. Yeah, I'm cooking. OK, whatever you say.
The original September deadline has arrived, but the windmill is far from finished. The wait for the windows has delayed laying the concrete screed, and the roof still isn't complete. Hi, Bernard, are you around? To get things back on schedule, LP decides the build needs a project manager. In a dramatic move, she takes on the role herself. It's exceedingly daunting for me to actually have to project manage this. This is a job that's got to be finished, and it's got to be finished on time and within budget. This was always going to be a job with problems. More problems probably than most jobs. I think Elfie sometimes feels that I'm not in control of running things, but she doesn't see what goes on behind the scenes. She doesn't see how I communicate with people. 17th, 18th. I'm quite happy for Elfie to take over, because she probably feels in her way that she's in control of the situation. And if that's what it takes to finish it, fair enough. It's plasterboarding. And LP takes to her new role like a duck to water. As far as I'm concerned, the first fix electrical is complete now, apart from this room and that room. First fix plumbing is running into next week. Now, the important thing there is while Liam's doing the underfloor heating, he can't have men walking around. If everything goes to plan, you're working on the windmill roof next week. You can just measure, make sure that a bath will fit here. Yeah. It's only a matter of days before LP gets results. The most important bit is these doors here. First, the concrete screed goes down. I've never been so excited in my life about screed. Ooh, what's happening? Well, that's going to be a big, big bath that you don't want to get into. Next. Two months behind schedule, LP's windows are finally fitted. I literally wake up in the morning thinking, today I must do this, this, this and this. Or, you know, at three o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning, sometimes I get up and make notes so I don't forget things. And it's even harder trying to manage a build and have an 11-month-old son that, that requires attention constantly. <laughs> Somebody was teething. Somebody was teething. I'm tired now. I'm quite concerned about this project. The build is, is very behind, and in desperation, LP has taken on project management to try and get it back on track. Now, that is obviously putting her under a lot of extra pressure. I'm very keen to see how she's bearing up. How's it been going since I last saw you? Very slow. I never expected I'd have to be out in the morning at 8 o'clock telling people what they have to do for the day, making sure that the materials are there, ordering materials. I, I never thought I'd have to do that. I never intended to actually manage the whole project. Uh, so I've had to, it's my home, I've had to take control because I just feel so frustrated that nothing has been happening. I mean, this was all about stepping back from, from yeah. working full time and spending more time mm, with your child. Mm. Over the last month, um, because I've been spending more and more time on the project and outside, um, I really haven't been spending... I don't feel I've been spending quality time with them. But it will finish, and it will all be like a bad dream, but with bad dreams you just wake up and you're fine, so... You've got to stay positive. It's good to see LP remaining upbeat, but the project is now three months behind schedule. So what have been the big events in the build recently? Well, the screed, for one, the, the, my floor. Your floor. Uh, Underfloor heating. Right. It does make you feel somehow that you're getting somewhere when there's a hard... Yeah. When there's a dirt floor in a building, Absolutely. you feel like you're so far from Absolutely. completion. Absolutely. For me, once the windows and, the, and this roof um, have all gone in, 
that that to me is when we you know the envelope's done and that's when we've not got a building site we've actually got a house can you show me around the rest of it then absolutely so where have come you got with to? me well we've had first fix electrical first fix plumbing yeah uh lounge dining room getting there slowly but surely it's a great space isn't it yeah it's brilliant and we've had some stairs built okay Let's try them <laughs> Right. A little bit awkward, aren't they? Yep. Yeah, yeah just... we're not really that happy with them, to be honest. It Very doesn't... awkward. It doesn't mm. work as a staircase no. as, it's, uh, as it's designed. We need to no. redo it. It's, it's a tricky situation, though, isn't it? It doesn't have the right rhythm to it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's got to be steeper. It's got to come to, like, a big, chunky timber platform mm -hmm. yep. there, and then maybe there's another couple of steps. So they feel like two different things. Yep. But... That's... It's coming on, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yes. This is also first fix. Why uh, is steel stud works in front of the waterproofing? What's that? I'm surprised you're actually asking me that, Charlie. Last time you were here, you suggested we insulate. Yes, I did. So, I did. I've taken on board your comments. <laughs> Somebody listen to me for once. Somebody, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So what are you going to put? Insulation? We're putting, yeah, we're putting sheep's wool insulation, so it's green and it's sort of building friendly. Um, so we're putting sheep's wool insulation, plasterboard. So it's going to be nice and cosy in here, well like you suggested. Done. That will make such a big difference to this building. I think so. It'll make it so much more usable. It would have been mm. freezing mm. otherwise. This project hasn't been going very well for Ian and LP, but with LP now in charge, it does seem as though it's turning a corner. But she is taking on a huge amount of responsibility and her stress levels keep on rising. I only hope that it starts to go a bit better because this dream project could become a bit of a nightmare. For the last 18 months, Ian and LP Greenhouse and their son William have been living on site while renovating this Grade 2 listed windmill. It's a complicated build and the project is now running three months behind schedule. Let me speak to them, I'm going to give her a ring shortly. There's no architect overseeing it, so to make sure they hit their Christmas deadline, LP has taken on the role of project manager. This is a job that's got to be finished and it's got to be finished on time and within budget. Four weeks after LP began managing the project, Bernard the Builder drops a bombshell. There's no more money. Work to the windmill stopped. All works have stopped. Um, we've now paid 100% of the contract value and we've had about 75% of the work done. Uh, so we're about 50 grand down. Although Bernard agrees there were financial problems, he thought he could make up the shortfall, which he estimated to be more like 30 grand. At a certain point in that job, we, we did a valuation of the works. Together with the combination of E&LP paying the money up front, which was always agreed from the word go, we ended up with an overspend as far as they're concerned. Although at some stage we were losing money, I felt that we could pull that back. Ian and LP will need to find more money to get the project finished. I'm feeling angry, I'm feeling fed up, annoyed, uh, but I've, I've sent Bernard home on the basis that the project isn't moving. It's the first time that I've actually considered actually selling this place and moving on because I, I didn't know if this will be my dream house anymore because I've had so much heartache. I'm very worried about LP. She's in a very dark place. Um, she's very much losing interest with the build. She's falling out of love with the property. She's very low. It's been very hard between Ian and I. Perhaps he doesn't see the emotional side of, of where I'm coming from. Um, I'm sure he does, it's just that he does not spend as many hours as I do in the shed. He doesn't spend as much time boiling the kettle to do the washing up. And I know I keep going on and on and on about it, but I've been boiling the kettle for 18 months. I've been boiling the kettle to do washing up for 18 months. I'm, I'm, I'm at the end of my tether. 
I'm at the end of my tether. With no builders on site and desperate for inspiration, LP leaves the build for the first time in months to seek out her dream bathroom. Ian's mum, Anne, has come to lend moral support. That's the top. That's the top. <laughs> I don't know where you stuck it up, but that is definitely... Is that £1.50 or is it £1,519? <laughs> that won't be coming with us. <laughs> she thinks we're mad. <laughs> she thinks we're absolutely mad. <laughs> no, I think it's a wonderful project, but it's just a shame, really, that it's taken so long, cos the baby... Really, it would be lovely for the baby to be in his own space now. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just need to... Oh, oh. Can I have my glass of champagne, please? <laughs> <sighs> Two weeks later, Ian and Elpie have been forced to dip into their savings to make up the shortfall. Bernard will continue to work on the project. Well, Bernard's back on site because we've agreed on the conditions uh, of him coming back. Bernard has agreed to a detailed schedule of works and probably in terms of a finish date, we're probably talking mid-February, maybe later than that. I said from the word go, we'd have to work together with this project. It won't work otherwise. As far as I can see, we, we can, we'll sort it out. Despite the delays, the builders have moved on to rendering the main house. And the last tiles are going on the roof. I can see uh, light at the end of the tunnel. I certainly can. Because, I mean, obviously we're now pretty much watertight. Our windows are in, our doors are in. Um, where our, our heating source is, is being, you know, sorted as we speak. Today, the ground source heat pump pipes are being laid. It's an eco-friendly system which provides hot water for heating by concentrating the Earth's natural heat into the windmill via a network of buried pipes. Essentially, it means that with pipes going down in the next week or so, uh, we're going to be ready to switch on the heating in, in the house. With work beginning to pick up on site, Ian and Elpy get the chance to imagine life in the not-too-distant future. We've turned the corner now, haven't we? I mean, it'll... Uh... Oh, we're getting there. We're not. We're... No, but we've got, we've, got, we've got rooms taking shape now, haven't we? And the kitchen will be in shortly, well, only a few months away. I'm looking forward to the summer, to be honest. I'm, uh... Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely. <laughs> It's been three months since I last saw Ian and Elpie, and I hear things are getting better. But now there's an issue with the lime render on the windmill's walls. Hello. Hello, Hi, Ian. Charlie. Happy New Year. Hello, Hi. Elpie. How Happy are you? Happy New Year. This looks like a bit of a problem. We've been away for Christmas, and we've come back to all the render flaking off. So did it just go on too late in the season? Because of the shape of the building. Um, water just runs down it, so this render's never had a chance to dry. But, but I mean, it's not... It's pretty sound in places. Yep. It's just the top coat that's, that's blown. Fortunately, the render problem can be solved relatively cheaply by careful patching. Can we go inside and see how you get it Absolutely, on? please do. Go on. Wow, this has really come on, hasn't it? It has. Oh, look. Plaster. <laughs> Love this, this light. It's got a really lovely sense of light and space. I mean, oh, it's beautiful, that one. You must be pleased because yeah. you feel like it's coming together slowly. Yes, it'll, uh, it'll feel even more so when the glass link is in and when my glass balustrades are uh, in as well. Before Christmas, you were really hoping to be in by Christmas. Clearly, you're not. Do you have a sense of when you might be in now? The middle of March. Which... There's a lot to do in seven weeks. So how is the relationship with Bernard now? Because it has been 
very, very difficult, hasn't it? He's back, um, and he is going to finish this job. And it really is as simple as that. What about looking for another contractor? Do you not get to a point where you go, I don't want to see this guy, I want other people to come in and finish the job? Absolutely. Yes. We did look at other contractors because at some point, I think it was October, we, had, uh, we, we asked them to leave site. We, we, couldn't, we, right. we couldn't come to an agreement away, so uh, we, we went out. We went to two more contractors. The, the problem you have is when you, when you bring other contractors in a job that's 70% done, they walk around and literally all you can hear is... Teeth sucking. Yeah. And all you can hear is, oh, that's a problem, oh, this is a problem. The numbers were far yeah. bigger than the number will be for Bernard to finish it. Mm. You're going to pay over the odds. We, we want to get in this house. We want to get in quickly. We want to get in, you know, as cost-effectively as possible. And if we've got an overrun on the project, let's minimise the overrun. Let's not, let's not go out of our way to make it more, than it more than it needs to be. The build may be costing more than originally budgeted for, but it would cost even more to get a new contractor to finish the job. With Ian paying the bills, I'm keen to find out how he's been bearing up. How do you feel about the strain that's been put on your family and, and on your relationships? I would have loved to have spent more time here. It's Elpy. She's really been under a tremendous amount of pressure. She's been here every single day. She's seen the progress or the lack of it on a daily basis. And, you know, that for her has been very, very difficult. So that's placed a tremendous strain on, on her and obviously the knock-on effect on, uh, on William and I. But um, I have to be fairly philosophical about it and, and say, look, you know, things happen and it'll be done when it's done and when it is, it'll be worth it. Do you think that the, the difficulty in making this build happen is going to damage LP's relationship to the home when it's actually finished? There was a point before Christmas where... LP really was sick to the back teeth of this. But now that we're getting to this part where we're thinking about colour schemes and wallpaper and, and we're thinking about how to dress the place, that is where she really will start to fall back in love with it again. Since I last saw LP, things seem to have gone from bad to worse. She's faced disappointment after disappointment, but I really get a sense that they're on the final straight. I suppose the only question now is how long is that final straight? When are they going to get to finally move in to this unique home? After nearly 12 months, the scaffolding has come down, the rendering has been patched up, and it's time to make this building site into a home. Thank you. Thank you. I've hardly had any sleep because I've been uh, very excited. The kitchen's arriving today, the glass link's arriving today, and my glass balustrades are arriving today, so uh, I've been waiting for this day for months. <laughs> Can't believe it's here! Hey! hey. We've got a tap! Helpy said she's always wanted one of these with a little pull-down extendable thingy. What are my choices, then? This one or this one. It's the utility, isn't it? So... I like this. I, just think that's, I think that's boring. Just absolutely amazing. So it's becoming a home now. It's not. It's not a building site, or it doesn't. It won't be a building site by the end of today. Months and months of frustration, and we're finally here. It's absolutely, yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. I don't think I've cried about this building out of joy, not uh, not sadness. This is tears of joy. It's all happening. LP Greenhouse bought this Grade 2 listed windmill with its modern house next door just over two years ago. But their complicated build was beset with delays. This is a job that's got to be finished on time and within budget.
It's been a turbulent year for Ian and LP. When I first met them, they had a very clear vision. Move to the peace and quiet of the countryside, provide their son William with a fantastic place to grow up, and breathe new life into their wonderful old windmill. But things haven't quite gone as they planned. This has been a very, very tough build. And while the couple have always remained strong, I think it has really pushed LP to her very limits. It's now eight months later than scheduled, but I'm happy to say at last they've moved in. The results of the past 12 months are clear to see. Ian and Elpie have created a truly unique home. Elpie. Hi. Ian. Hi, Good Charlie. To see you. Great to see you. How are you? Good, Good to see you, Charlie. Finished. Nearly finished. Nearly. Nearly. Looks very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Are you pleased? Yes. The well. inside's looking good? Well, Come you, look. you tell us. Come on, I'd love to have a look. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it will. Come in. Oh, yes. You've been busy. The interior is as impressive as the exterior. Very swish. It looks yes. like one out of a magazine. Like a proper one. Think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How relieved are you to be pretty much finished? Very. <laughs> yeah, very. Yeah, very is it's... an understatement. I'm absolutely delighted we're in. I mean, you must just get lost in this place. I mean, it's big, isn't it? The first night we slept in here, I felt very much sort of... Um, institutionalised. I mean, it was too big, you know. I, I... It's quite a scary experience for both of us, wasn't yeah, it? Was. We, uh, I don't think we got very much sleep that night. Yeah. We were in shock. You're in the lap of luxury. Are you still having to boil a kettle every time you want hot water? Oh, Charlie, have a look at this. <laughs> As these are simple pleasures in life. This it's hot is water. hot water. Oh, God, imagine water. that in a house. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. The house feels spacious and light, and the open-plan living makes each room flow into one another. The glass balustrade's really good. It really helps that sense of link, doesn't it, between here and, and, and upstairs. Mm, brilliant. The glass link creates a clear division between the old windmill and the modern building next door. Fantastic. Wonderful. Look at the light pouring in here. This yeah, must have been there. difficult because you've got curves in two directions. Yeah. But because of that, you really understand the shape of the windmill, yeah. which is great. And what I think is really good, having walked around the house, is that you've given the house design a sense of unity because you have these, these voids, these big cuts yeah. through the structure. And that's the thing that links it. It works very well. And again, you know, just a simple treatment of this opening means you understand that extraordinary shape. Remember when you first came and I said I had this idea of I wanted to create something? Well, I've done it and I'd like to show you, show you it. Me. Yes, I did. LP, this is your special pampering room, isn't it? This is my spa bathroom. I think in the darkest days when I thought this build was never going to finish, this, the idea of sitting in that bath with my bubbles, my candles and everything else, my fluffy towels, really kept me going and gave me sort of the, the, the required sort of incentive, I suppose, to carry on. It's great to see they've solved the staircase problem. The spiral stairs sit perfectly in the curved walls of the windmill. I think Elpie has done really well with the interior design. 
but this build has taken twice as long as they intended. I mean, I remember coming on the first visit and being told your schedule and thinking... That was ambitious, yeah. Well, I mean, I would, the only thing I would say is that normally on a project of this scale, you would expect to have either an architect or a project manager yep. to run it. And there is going to be a professional there organising it who is not the builder on site every day. Well, do, with hindsight, would, do you think if you were to do it again, you would have think, well, maybe we need an architect, maybe we need a project manager? Knowing what we know now, we would employ just a project manager and we would have that project manager organise the build. What was the original budget? Um, I think the original budget was 340,000. We have certainly topped 400, and it's probably nearer 420. I mean, I know it seems it's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't underestimate that, but these things do cost more than you'd expect, and this is high standard work. Yeah. I mean, you've gone for expensive finishes. Yeah. It's got a very difficult element, the windmill, yeah. which is a technically a very challenging thing to do, yeah. which means it's expensive. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, we're not going to do this again now. You know, this is, this is done. Well, if we do do it again, we're going to do it with another wife, darling, aren't we? <laughs> because I am not doing it again. Can I have another wife? If you is can. Is that legal? Yes, and I'm not going to be one of them, trust me. <laughs> really battled for this building to be the way it is. Was it worth it? I mean, if it's been that painful... If I didn't love this house, we wouldn't be sitting here. I would have... Uh, I would have insisted we sold it because I'd absolutely had enough of it. So there's no question of whether I love... I'm, I'm in love with this house. Ian, are you proud of what Elfie's achieved? Oh, yeah, very much so. I mean, she's done a terrific job here. She's created a wonderful home, and, it, it, you know, you can't but be proud of somebody that does that. The foundations are here now. It's now the time to enjoy it. There's no doubt that for Ian and Elpie, this has been quite some build. It's a large demanding project but I for one think that the results have really been worth it and my only hope is that they can now forget the pain move on and really start enjoying this incredible home Next time, the Woodhouses attempt to transform a sawmill in Kent into a family home. Don't let it lean in, Woods. I can't. Keep it straight. Oh, bugger off. Get out. None of us are particularly enjoying it. Hi. Wow, 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 wow.